Welcome to our Learning and Teaching Curriculum Cafe videos. So in this video, we will be taking a look at Open Middle Math and how we can use these problems to promote deeper thinking in our math classrooms. So you may be asking, what is Open Middle Math? If you've never used or heard of Open Middle Math, they are a collection of math problems that were created by Robert Kuklinski. He believes that how we solve a problem and the thinking that we do is a lot more important than the answer. And so a lot of the problems that you'll see in just a bit really involve focusing on how we're working on these problems. These are all quote unquote easy math problems to use and they are all sorted by grade level. Um, I say quote unquote easy um, just because uh, you'll see in just a second that even though all students can access these problems, they do require a little bit more thinking um, because they um, are higher DOK level problems. Um, and these problems also may look procedural, but these problems actually allow students to practice and reason with multiple ways to approach and solve these problems. So let's start with this problem here. Go ahead and pause the video while you solve this problem. And then once you have finished, um, go ahead and press play. All right, welcome back. So. Pretty standard problem, right? You probably were able to just use the standard algorithm if you didn't use your calculator um, and figured out the answer is 455. Pretty simple problem. Let's try another one. During this problem, it's still the same concept, um, but it's asked in a different way. So we have to use the digits one through nine at most one time each to fill the boxes to create two true number sentences. So again, Go ahead and press pause while you work on it. And then once you're ready to move on, go ahead. All right, now this one was a little bit more difficult, right? So I'll kind of walk you through what I did. Um, I started with the digits 9, 8, and 7. So I did 987 minus 291. Um, but once I did the math, um, I got 696 and realized that's not going to work. There's two sixes there, and I'm only allowed to use the digits once each. So then I tried using 986, hoping that if I changed my ones, then I would no longer get that six there. Um, but obviously that didn't work because I got 695. And since I placed a six in that original number that I started, I still ended up with two sixes. So now I'm on my third try. And so for my third try, I tried 786 and thankfully, um, when I did this, I got 495, so that works out, right? Um, but like I mentioned earlier, it took me, and I like to think of myself as a pretty experienced teacher, um, it took me three tries. So you can see how these, you know, get you thinking a little bit more. Let's do one more problem. This time, we're still using the digits one through nine, um, but this time we need to fill the boxes so that the difference is as close to 329 as possible. So again, go ahead and pause this video while you work on this problem. And then once you're ready to move on, go ahead and press play. All right, so how'd you do? <laughs> this definitely was not easy, right? Um, it took me until my fifth try to finally get a number sentence that worked. Let me walk you through what I did. Hopefully you were a little bit more successful than I was. So. I decided I was going to work backwards, thinking that I get this super fast, right? If I have to get close to 329, then I'm just going to add a number to 329 um, and get an answer. So I started with 213, um, and I essentially added this to 329, and I ended up with 542. So obviously, that doesn't work because I ended up with two twos there. So now I'm on to my next try. And so I decided I was going to switch my number. So instead of 213, now I'm trying 216. So I tried changing my one's place to a six there, hoping I'd get something a little bit more different. Um, but that gave me 545. So obviously that didn't work either. Now I have two fives. Um, so then I tried changing my hundreds place, um, hoping that I'd get rid of one of those fives, right? So I, instead of using 216, I decided using 516. Uh, um, but obviously I was not paying attention and I forgot that I already had a five that I was trying to get rid of. And so I ended up with two fives. So here I go again and I tried 512 um, and I ended up with this one um, with two ones because I gave me 841. So now I'm on my fifth try. 
And this time I ended up with 513 because now I knew that I just needed to switch one of my ones place. And so that gave me 842. And I know that 842 minus 513 is exactly 329. And so again, like I said, I like to think of myself as a pretty experienced teacher. And even I had to take several tries before I got a correct number sentence. So you may be wondering, how do students do on these problems, right? How will the students do? Well, Robert Kaplinsky actually asked a group of students to solve these same three problems that I just had you work on. Um, and here are the results. You can see that out of this group of students that he had solved these problems, 62% of them were successful in completing problem number one correctly. Only 39% of those same students were successful with problem two. And only 29% of those students were successful in solving problem number three. One thing to note is that these are the exact same students solving all three problems. And so really what we may want to look at actually is this 23% and 33% that's shown in red. This 23% and 33% is the amount of students that appear to know what they're doing because they were successful with problem one, um, but they really don't know what they're doing. It's a false positive. So when we really think about this, sense making comes from paying attention to what we have to do to the numbers to get the results that we want. If we just start throwing numbers on here every single time, there's no sense making. And so problem one, you should know, was a DOK problem one, uh, DOK one problem. Problem two was a DOK two. And then problem three was a DOK three problem. So you can see that students really have to make sense of these math problems to be successful with them. And so, you know, you have to really pay attention to, are my students really understanding the concept if I'm only giving them DOK1 type problems? You might also have this false sense of, um, these false positives in your classroom if that's what you're doing. You may also be asking, well, are my students even gonna like these problems? They make you think a whole lot harder about these problems, right? And so Robert Kaplinsky challenged us to search on Twitter, hashtag why open middle. And so I went ahead and did just that. And here are some of the tweets that I found um, that were super positive that I just loved. So you can see this fifth grade teacher here um, said that her students tackled an open middle problem that day. Um, she put critical thinking plus multiplication plus collaboration and she overheard the students saying, this is hard, but fun. Another one here, my students live for these. Nearly every day I'm asked, you got any more of those open problem things for us to solve? Here's another one. Her, these fifth grade students could not stop doing these. A student even asked for his paper during recess so that he could try to get even closer. And here's one last one. I love open middle. Second, second graders were working on a problem that was subtraction, make the smallest difference possible using the digits one through nine. The conversation and perseverance was something I had never seen from these kids. That's awesome to see. So obviously the, some of the benefits of using open neural problems, kids obviously love doing them. Um, they really do build conceptual understanding. Um, they really do lead also into these great conversations between the students, between the teacher and the students and just around the math itself. Um, and my favorite, honestly, is that they really do reveal some hidden misconceptions that we may not know our students have. So you may be wondering, how do we even do this, right? Most of our kids are not used to persevering. Um, and so with Open Middle, Robert Kaplinsky has included an Open Middle worksheet that I'll show you how to access in just a bit that focuses on a growth mindset way to solve these problems. So it includes having students record the multiple attempts that they take and to really pay attention to the changes that they've made to get the results that they want. You may also be asking, what about timing? Do we even have the time during our day to do these problems? I know that these take a little bit longer than a normal you know, worksheet would, um, but honestly, I would say use them anytime you would have used that math worksheet or even during independent practice time. Um, you can substitute them for the problem set or the homework for your Eureka math as well. We can also use these, um, use these instead of assessments. These will really let us know what our students really know, right? Um, one word of advice, I, I wouldn't give this as an assessment if my students don't have experience 
using open little problems. But if your students have had enough practice with this type of problems, then incorporating it, incorporating open metal problems into the assessment in the future would totally be doable. So let's get into the open middle website so that you can see how to access um, these problems. So if you open a Google doc, uh, a Google uh, browser here, I'm just gonna search open middle. And this should be the first link that you get here. So it's just www.openmiddle.com. As soon as you click on here, um, you'll see that Robert Kaplinski has actually, um, there we go. So Robert Kaplinski has dedicated an entire website to these open middle problems. And so you'll see up at the top that you have all the different grade levels. So I did tell you these were um, separated by grade level. And then he also has them by a strand for the standards. And so you can really pay attention to the types of problems you give your students. Um, so up at the top, you have your option for grades. And then down here, you'll see, here's this open middle worksheet that I was telling you about. And so he has a student version. And so this is something that you would print out for your students. Um, there's, a, there's a space for each attempt. So here's the first attempt and the students really have to reflect on what they learned from that attempt and have any strategy that they're gonna use for their next attempt. And then they continue on into their second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth attempt. What's cool about this worksheet is that students get two points per attempt and then two points for each explanation. So obviously the more attempts they take, the more points they could potentially get. And so this really gets them to really, you know, not focus on trying to get it on their first try, but really paying attention to the attempt that they're taking. Right underneath the student version, there's also a document camera version for the teachers. And so it's the exact same thing, except on a full sheet of paper, um, so that if you are using it on your document camera, um, it just shows up a little bit larger. And then the last thing he has there is a Google Doc version. So when you click on it, it'll prompt you to make a copy. Um, and if you go ahead and make a copy, you can see that it's the exact same worksheet, but on a Google Docs. And so you can share this with your students via Google Classroom, if that's something that you're doing. So I'll go ahead and click into one of the grade, uh, one of the problems here. So let's go into third grade and let's just do numbers and operations in base 10. And so here's some of the problems that you can see. Um, that he's got tons of problems. You can see here they go on. He's got more pages of these problems. Um, if you click into any one of these problems, um, let's do adding three digit numbers. Um, what's nice about what he has is he has the directions there for you. So you can obviously copy paste this into any document you want. You can also copy paste that image. Um, he has a hint, which I really love. And so if your students are struggling um, with even getting started with this problem, he gives a hint um, that you can ask your students. So what place value will be most important to consider? How can you tell whether the sum will be more or less than 700 without adding all of the digits, right? And so here's a few hints that you can use with your students. And then obviously he's got the answer there for us. Most of these problems have a ton of different answers. And so he has a few possibilities on there. Um, and then if you look at the comments, um, other people have also commented different possibilities as well. So you can always get um, different variations on there as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click into the home page um, because one of my favorite things that he's done is he's actually created a Google Sites version of all of these problems. And so if you go ahead and click on this Google Slides version, you'll have access again to all the different grade levels. Um, and if you click into any of these bitlies here, again, it'll prompt you to, but once you make a copy, um, you will have access to a Google Slides document that includes all of the problems. And so here's some of these problems, right? And what I really love about these is that, you know, the students can then manipulate these cute, these little squares here to help them solve the problem a lot easier. So they won't have to subtract. I mean, they won't have to erase a whole lot. Um, they can just manipulate these little cubes here that'll help them solve that problem. And so you can copy the one page and share with your students. You can also just project it on the board for your students. And so just know that these are there for you um, to use. And all of this is free of charge. Um, one last thing that I want to share with you. Um, he does have these number tiles. So if you don't want to use the Google Slides, he has the number of tiles there so that students can cut out the, the tiles with the digits zero through nine or negative nine through nine. So the students can still manipulate those numbers without having to erase as much. And then if you'd rather browse um, by depth of knowledge, then just know that he has all the problems that he's tagged DOK to. 
on this link here and any problem tag DOK3 on the strategic thinking, those are linked here. And so you can also do them that way. All right. So that was open middle. I hope that you guys um, enjoyed this presentation and I hope that you guys try these out in your classroom. If you do, please let me know how it goes. You can always email me um, at rosa.gutierrez at omsd.net. I would love to know how these went with your students. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you the next time around. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.